Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. The Federal Reserve slashed interest rates on Wednesday, announcing the first rate cut since March 2020. The half-point move paves the way for lower borrowing costs on everything from mortgages to credit cards. It marks a crucial milestone for the central bank's historic inflation fight, which kept rates at a bruising 23-year high for more than a year. President Joe Biden acknowledged the Fed's success at such a critical juncture, saying in a statement on X that, quote, we just reached an important moment, end quote. The decision to cut by half a point sent a message to Americans that central bankers feel a sense of urgency to provide the U.S. economy with swift relief from elevated borrowing costs, considering there were blaring calls in recent days for the Feds to kick off the rate-cutting cycle with a bang. On Wednesday, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters declined to endorse either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump for president, saying neither candidate had sufficient support from the 1.3 million member union. Teamsters president Sean M. O'Brien said in a statement, quote, Unfortunately, neither major candidate was able to make serious commitments to our union to ensure the interests of working people are always put before big business. We saw commitments from both Trump and Harris not to interfere in critical union campaigns or core Teamsters industries and to honor our members' right to strike, but we were unable to secure those pledges." End quote. Merrick Masters, a business professor emeritus at Wayne, Wayne State University in Detroit, said the Teamsters' lack of an endorsement suggests a realignment within the union's membership. For many workers, issues such as gun control, abortion, and border security override Trump's expressions of hostility to unions, Masters said. The State Department announced Wednesday that Americans can now renew their adult passports online. The new system bypasses the traditional method that required printing out a form and mailing a check. The State Department said in a statement, quote, By offering this online alternative to the traditional paper application process, the department is embracing digital transformation to offer the most efficient and convenient passport renewal experience possible, end quote. A public beta version of the new process was originally launched in June. It is now available 24-7 at travel.state.gov. Tupperware, known to the world for its plastic food storage containers, has filed for bankruptcy after years of falling popularity and financial troubles. Chapter 11, bankru Chapter 11 bankruptcy allows companies to solve their financial problems by restructuring. Lorianne Goldman, president and CEO of Tupperware Brands Corporation, said in a statement late Tuesday, quote, this process is meant to provide us with essential flexibility as we pursue strategic alternatives to support our transformation into a digital-first, technology-led company." End quote. Tupperware has historically sold to consumers only through so-called direct sales, most commonly at Tupperware parties, similar to cosmetic company Avon's business model, and only began selling in Target in 2022. Even though the brand was once a household name, it became less popular with younger consumers in contrast with some of its competitors. Last week, Consumer Reports, a nonprofit that helps consumers evaluate goods and services, released a report that showed high levels of lead in 12 brands of cinnamon powder and multi spice powders. Brands Paris, EGN, ShopRite, Bowl and Basket, Ronnie, Zara Foods, Three Rivers, Yu Yi, Spicy King, Body, and Deep all had their cinnamon products recalled. For the test, Consumer Reports gathered about three samples each of 36 different spice products that included cinnamon, 
garam masala, and multiple other spice mixes. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the concentrations of lead and cinnamon were thousands of times higher than those found in any testing of spices, between about 2,300 and 5,100 parts per million. Since then, the FDA has been issuing consumer health alerts on high levels of lead in different cinnamon products. The latest, published in August, listed 10 different cinnamon products with levels as high as 3.93 ppm of lead. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. Hi, I'm Phil Ng, General Manager of the MBTA. We have a tremendous amount of work that has been ongoing throughout our system since we launched this track improvement program. And I want everyone to know that we have significant work coming up, starting Friday, September 6th, and ending on Sunday, September 29th. We will begin a 24-day closure of the Braintree branch in between JFK UMass and Braintree stations. During this time, Red Line trains will not be serving North Quincy, Wollaston, Quincy Center, Quincy Adams, and Braintree stations. To get our riders moving, we will provide alternative transportation options, including free shuttles, commuter rail, and Winthrop Quincy ferry service. I know the timing of this diversion may be problematic and understand this will be disruptive, especially with the start of the school year. But this is crucial work that once complete will begin to bring immediate benefits to our riders and the communities that we serve. So I ask all of you for your patience as we revitalize 18 miles of track I want our riders to know that we'll be accomplishing record work in terms of long deferred track work, signal work, power work, and station work that's needed to enhance their trips. At the end of this 24 days, we'll be restoring service back to its 40 miles an hour maximum speed. And then over the course of the next few months, we will be raising speeds to up to 50 miles an hour. At the end of this, riders will be able to regain 27 minutes a day of their travel. Every day, round trip, they will save 27 minutes. To increase awareness and help riders plan ahead, we're working with our community partners and stakeholders to inform riders, including all of the returning students. We're also implementing several new outreach strategies to target customers that live or work around Red Line stations. Riders are encouraged to visit mbta.com slash redline to view our Red Line Diversions Riders Guide and to subscribe to T-Alerts for up-to-date travel information. The MBTA will continue to invest in our infrastructure so you, our riders, experience a better, a safer, and more reliable transit system day in and day out. The one that you deserve, the one that you've been asking for, we're committed to giving to you. The number of weekly subway trips is increasing on every line, and the headways, the time between trains, at peak travel times, are the best they've been in a long time. Less than three minutes on the green line, five minutes on the blue line, six minutes on the red line, and seven minutes on the orange line, and they will only get better. And what I've committed to is eliminating all speed restrictions by the end of 2024. We are well on our way to doing that, and that will allow us to be able to maintain our system beyond that period going forward, to be able to give you the level of service that you deserve and expect, and what we've promised you. And hopefully you've already felt these improvements across the system. System closure of this magnitude takes the hard work and dedication of hundreds of MBTA employees and construction workers. I want to thank everyone involved in planning and delivering and safely executing all of these diversions and this upcoming one. Your work contributes to making the T safer, faster, more reliable, and hopefully the preferred choice of travel. I also want to thank our riders for their continued patience and confidence that the T will get this job done and we're getting this done for you. Thank you for riding the T. Welcome back. The new CVS Pharmacy location in town is closer to opening. A CVS spokesperson said that the retailer is aiming to open in late September or early October. The new 13,000 square foot standalone store is located at Grove and Liberty Streets, diagonally across from the closing location at 270 Grove Street in Tedeschi Plaza. The new CVS will have a drive through a minute clinic, and serve as a UPS drop-off site. Meanwhile, the town's planning board last Tuesday approved a special permit and site plan for a new use of the soon-to-be-vacant space. Aquatots, an international child swim school, will open its second Massachusetts location there. Here's a clip from the planning board meeting on the project. 
Uh, looks like they're making good strides on the new building. Um, when do you think that they might um, leave? They, they <laughs> great question. Not, not soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> they project CVS to open uh, sometime October, and their oh. lease ends no matter what end of the year. They have to vacate no matter what. They have to vacate when, sir? End of the year. Got it. Okay. Yep. Uh, and I know we talked about this last time, but um, I think there's great interest in in hearing again how are you going to put the uh, pool or whatever you call it in there. I think you told me you're going to dig a hole and put in maybe a prefab. So if you could just go through that with us again, I want to be entertained again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll, let, I'll let Jay take it. You probably entertain way better on that subject. <laughs> not a problem. So it, it's really just a general built, standard slab on grade in a shopping center. Dig about 18 to 1900 square foot um, pool. The pool consists of only four foot deep. Okay. It's the walls are. It, it's not a prefab. It's all. Um, it's a gunite pool. Okay. And it's got like a foot <laughs> thick of walls and flooring and rebar. By the time the rebar is done, it's like a 12 by 12 inch grid. So it's full of rebar and concrete. Um, so they're really only gonna dig down six, six foot or so. Tops. Yeah. Tops, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We won't hit bedrock, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a lot of bedrock in this town. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, after that, it's just a regular construction build. So that's the whole heart of the build, it's the pool. The rest of it is just a general Offices, restrooms, um, yep. checkout desk, and what have you. Right. But nothing special after that. Okay. Work on Braintree's water treatment plant could cause a surprise from some residents, but officials say it isn't a cause for concern. The work is scheduled from 8 p.m. to midnight on Wednesday. Officials said there is a slight potential that the work could cause water discoloration, but said the problem can be solved by running cold water until it runs clear again. Quote, if you have any questions, please call the Water Department at 781-843-8097, town officials said in, a, in an alert this week. On Tuesday, September 19th, Braintree's Department of Elder Affairs held an, an Alzheimer's Education and Awareness Program. During the event, a number of organizations were in attendance to give an overview of their services and what they provide to patients battling with Alzheimer's. Here's more about the organizations in attendance and their offerings. So I'm from Brush Health Healthcare Facility. We are a long-term and short-term nursing home over in Milton. Um, we've been open for quite some years, but we recently um, have renovated our facility and updated a lot of our rooms. We have a 4,000 square feet um, rehab facility. We have long-term and short-term um, rehab, and we also provide um, a locked unit on one of our on our floors for um, Alzheimer's and dementia patients. Sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Surya Sunal. I work with Dr. Malni Nair in Braintree. We have a novel blood test that tests for the uh, tau protein. Now, the tau protein is one of the culprits that causes memory loss and Alzheimer's disease. So, we have a blood test that for free finds out if the protein exists in your blood. So, um, what we're trying to do now is spread the word, you know, let people know that it exists so that they can come in and get a stipend too and get a free blood test that helps them know if they have this disease because as we all know it's very important to plan for the future and this tells us if you do have memory loss or not if it's because of Alzheimer's or not and with a 90% sensitivity. Hello my name is Ray and uh, uh, I want to introduce some of the program in our city in our office in our clinic and uh, we also offer uh, some study program to help those old, older patients with Alzheimer's disease uh, have symptoms of agitation, anxiety, and then please come. We are ready to help you. Thank you. Yeah, so we're part of Faring Way in South Weymouth, and on our campus we have independent living. We also have a rehab center for excellent care, and we have a new physical therapy that just opened earlier this summer. Um, but the most amazing news I can share with you today 
is our community and campus turns 100 years old this year. And so to celebrate that on October 5th, we have a gala happening. Um, it's um, again, Saturday night, the 5th of October at 5 p.m. And it's a wonderful event, a lot of silent auction items and a really wonderful giving, caring people will be there. Sure. It's I, uh, the organization is the Mary Balecki Foundation. We uh, bridge service gaps in the areas of hunger, health, and homelessness uh, through collaboration and resources that we uh, develop ourselves. Uh, what we're looking to do is um, look at the services provided by other organizations and see if there's gaps that we can fill in. So an example of that would be um, we do a food rescue from the Wardsbury Farm in Sharon, and we have a, a network of about oh, 10 or 11 pantries that we deliver that food to. Uh, we also have an emergency services, so if somebody has some emergency services that they need, we can provide those. And we're looking at doing uh, homebound veterans and uh, seniors uh, meals, prepared meals for them. We talked a lot about uh, what is happening in Alzheimer's and dementia science research and treatment. We do know a lot now about how the changes occur in the brain, which has helped us to better um, develop treatments for Alzheimer's disease. So one of the things that we talked about is a new treatment called Lakembi. The way that the medication works is that it attaches to plaque that builds up in the brain, flushes away that plaque, and it slows the progression for people living specifically with Alzheimer's disease with very mild symptoms and evidence of beta amyloid plaque in their brain. And this is not a cure, but it's incredibly important because for the first time, we have a treatment that can deal with the biology of Alzheimer's disease and slow the progression. The important news there is that science does build on science. So this treatment is really going to help us to accelerate, hopefully, more treatments uh, addressing other kinds of brain diseases and other causes of Alzheimer's disease and other brain diseases as well. The Department of Elder Affairs will continue to hold programs just like this one that aims to help seniors and the town of Braintree. For more information on upcoming events or for any questions, just contact the Elder Affairs Department at 781-848-1963 or stop by at 71 Cleveland Avenue in Braintree. In October, South Shore Health is hosting a Senior Safety Program in Braintree. The Senior Safety and Resource Fair is a free event on October 9th that features classes, demonstrations, and information for seniors, caregivers, and individuals of all ages. This community event is sponsored by the Friends of South Shore Health, the Braintree Department of Elder Affairs, and the Rotary Club of Braintree. The fair will be held at the Braintree Department of Elder Affairs located at 71 Cleveland Avenue in Braintree from 2 to 4 p.m. Registration is encouraged, and if you'd like to register, please call 781-848-1963. This October, the Bow Sox Club is hosting the second annual Sox and Suds event with special guest Dan Shaughnessy. The Bow Sox Club will be celebrating their 20th anniversary at the Widowmaker Brewing Company on October 17th. Those with tickets can attend the event from 7 to 9 p.m. There, there will be special memorabilia, autographs, and book signings happening during the event, as well as free food catered by Bone and Brad. To buy a ticket, head to bowsoxclub.org. Fair Public Library staff and trustees are excited to announce a month-long celebration in September, commemorating the library's 150th anniversary of serving, educating, and connecting the town of Braintree. A wide range of special events and activities are planned, offering something for all ages as the library reflects on its rich history and looks forward to the future. Throughout September, children are invited to make a birthday card for the library in the children's room. Additionally, all visitors are encouraged to share their favorite library memories on the community board that will be set up in the library. For more information about the Thayer Public Library's 150th anniversary events, visit thayerpubliclibrary.org or contact the library by phone at 781-848-0405, extension 4417, or by email at referencedesk at braintreeamade.gov. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area.
Take steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA-approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light-colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. A private school in Quincy is rallying around a family after they lost their Belmont Street home in a fire last week. Quincy Catholic Academy is now asking local residents to help support the family following a fire last week. The school did not identify the family, but in a statement posted to Facebook, the school said, quote, Thankfully, no one was injured, but their home is a total loss. As a nonprofit, we can act as a simple liaison to assist the family, end quote. The school said it is accepting donations of cash or checks made out to Quincy Catholic Academy or gift cards for the family. Donations can be dropped off at the school's main office at 370 Hancock Street in Quincy. Last week, Quincy fire officials said the family of eight and their dog were displaced but unharmed after a three-alarm fire raged through their home at 301 Belmont Street. The Town of Weymouth is holding the 5th Annual Irish Heritage Day this Sunday. Weymouth Irish Heritage Day will start at 11 a.m. with a parade on Union Street from the Hamilton School to the Cottage Bar, featuring pipe and drum bands, floats, and sports teams. A festival featuring Irish step dancers, vendors, food trucks, and live Irish music will take place until 3 p.m. in Stella Terrell Park. Sean McCafferty, a musician from Ireland, will perform, as well as dancers from the Forbes School of Irish Dance. For more information, check out the Facebook event at 2024 Weymouth Irish Heritage Day. MBTA service is being disrupted once again, and this time it will affect Braintree residents and riders. From September 6th through the 29th, Red Line services will be suspended between the JFK UMass stop and Braintree. Shuttle buses will make stops at Braintree, Quincy Adams, Quincy Center, Wollaston, North Quincy, and Ashmont. Free and accessible shuttle buses will operate directly between South Station and Braintree, stopping only at South Station and Braintree. The diversion schedule is available online at mbta.com. As if traveling in Massachusetts wasn't already difficult, your travel plans will get even harder in years to come. New lane restrictions were put into place over the weekend as MassDOT enters the next phase of a $230 million project to replace eight bridges at the Massachusetts Turnpike and the I-95 Route 128 interchange on the Newton and Weston borders. MassDOT said the project includes the full replacement of five bridges, the rehabilitation of one, and the installation of new superstructures on two others. As the next phase of construction begins, new lane closures will be put into place to allow construction crews safe access. The on-ramps to the Mass Pike eastbound and westbound from I-95 Route 128, as well as the off-ramp from the Pike to I-95 Route 128 northbound, will be reduced to a single lane in each direction. These lane reductions will continue throughout the duration of the project, which is scheduled to last through the fall of 2028. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, a retired captain from the Quincy Fire Department and the author of the book, Fighting Fire, A Proactive Approach. Home fire deaths have been cut in half since the early 70s when smoke detectors were first marketed. Having smoke detectors in your home can double your chances of survival in a fire. 60% of residential fire deaths occur in homes without smoke detectors. Thus, smoke detectors must be present on each level of habitation. Photoelectric smoke detectors are required within 20 feet of a kitchen, bath, or shower. They are required on the ceiling outside bedrooms no further than 10 feet away. They are also required to be present on the ceiling at the base of stairwells. Additional placement may be required depending upon the year the home was built or when a substantial addition was added. Create a safe home environment. Maintain your smoke detectors. Thank you for doing so. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now, here's Chris Curran with the latest on fall sports at Braintree High.
The Brentshire High School boys soccer team are coming off some high-scoring games from this last week. A 4-3 loss to Needham and a 3-2 win over Milton. Both games, Braintree had 2-0 leads in which both opposing teams came back from. Let's look at the highlights from the win over Milton. A pass finds McClory from inside the 20, and he sneaks one inside the post for the first goal of the game. Morrison with a give-and-go pass to Monroe to find the second goal of the game, giving Braintree a 2-0 lead. As the game was tied 2-2, Monroe has a corner kick. He finds McClory for the header to give him the lead 3-2. It's McClory again! Towards the end of the game, while Braintree had a one-goal lead, Farrow had to make some amazing saves, including this one, where he uses his height to get the ball over the crossbar. And this next one, let's hear Mike Wassel's call this of it. Bent across the field, dangerous spot, as the shot is saved by foul rebound. It's also kept away a third chance, and it somehow stays out. As Braintree trying to clear, frantically, the save. Girls soccer coming off three games last week, winning two of them, both in shutout fashion, make them two and three on the season. Let's see highlights from the most recent Central Catholic win. The first goal of the game coming off a corner kick that finds Jones in front for the header, putting it top shelf. The second goal coming off another corner kick that gets lost in a scrum in front of the net but finds Jones' foot to put it in for her second goal of the game. This week, the boys take on Newton North, who are 1-5 on the season, and Framingham, who are 2-2-3 on the season. The girls take on Newton North who are 1-3-1 and one on the season, and Framingham, who are 1-3 and three on the season. You can find any live or rebroadcast of the game on BCAM, Comcast Channel 9, or Verizon Channel 28, or our YouTube channel, BCAM TV. Let's send it back to Martha in the studio. Thanks, Chris. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations to share with you, but first, let's dive into some news. Sean Diddy Combs was arrested in New York following a federal grand jury indictment linked to a months-long sex trafficking investigation. The indictment outlines extensive abuse allegations against multiple women since 2008, including verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual assault. A significant focus of the indictment was on the explicit parties known as freak-offs that Combs frequently arranged. Additionally, the indictment claims Combs led a criminal organization involved in various illegal activities including sex trafficking, forced labor, and drug offenses. It also suggests that he exploited his influence in the music industry to man manipulate victims. The investigation is still ongoing. Now let's dive right into our three must-see movie recommendations. First, Cult Killer follows a private investigator who forcibly gets into a dangerous alliance with a killer to uncover a town's grisly criminal underbelly and clear the name of her mentor, who is implicated in the crimes. The film stars Alice Eve and Shelley Henning. You can watch Cult Killer now on Hulu. Next, the front room follows newly pregnant Belinda, whose life goes to hell after her mother-in-law moves in. As the diabolical guest tries to get her claws on the child, Belinda must draw the line somewhere. The film stars Brandy and Katherine Hunter. You can watch The Front Room now in theaters. And finally, The Substance follows Elizabeth Sparkle, who faces a devastating blow on her 50th birthday as her boss fires her. Amid her distress, a laboratory offers her a substance which promises to transform her into an enhanced ver version of herself. The film stars Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley. You can watch The Substance now in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constandinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAMP TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.